Hello, and welcome along to the uh, next in the series of videos uh, about uh, setting up Chocolatey within your organization. So in the previous video that uh, we've you may have just watched, we were setting up the uh, Chocolatey Central Management Database. So we have a Chocolatey Central Management Database server, and on there we installed SQL Server and uh, we installed the, the database, the actual schema and some seed data that is the CCM database. So what we need to do next is we need to look at setting up the CCM service. So CCM is really three components, the database, the service, and the website. So we've done the database, now we're looking at the service. So let's go ahead. So on this machine, this is another machine that I have in the mix. So this is my CCM service machine. Um, done a little bit of prep work on this machine. Namely, I have installed Chocolatey using the uh, client setup script that we used in a previous video. Uh, but other than that, and uh, it's setting up the default configuration, this machine has got nothing on it, okay? So let's have a look at the documentation. So the documentation for the uh, CCM service, uh, again, there's lots of detail in here. I would encourage you to read through this and um, dig into it a little bit to make sure that you understand. Uh, there are some uh, common gotchas uh, with regard to mainly around the SQL Server authentication. So once you start looking at that, I would encourage you to uh, read through all the documentation and make sure that the connection string that you're passing in uh, matches uh, what you've set up in your uh, SQL Server instance. Okay, but let's let, let's start working through the documentation and see where we can get to. Okay, so there is a requirement for .NET 461 to be installed. Uh, I'm fairly sure that will already be installed but let's go ahead and uh, test that out. I think we've already got that on this machine. Uh, that's really one of the uh, base. Uh, it's already on because it's a, a server 2019 machine, but we'll just make sure. And if it isn't, if it is there, uh, the chocolate package will essentially know up and say that it's already there. So then we start getting into uh, the the woods here. So what it's saying is by default, the service will install as a local administrative user called Chocolatey Local Admin. Uh, and it will manage the database and manage the database and manage the password as well, sorry. However, you can specify your own user with package parameters such as a domain account. So if you want the uh, CCM service, which runs as a Windows service to run under a specific username and password, uh, you can definitely do that with package parameters. If you don't provide any of that information, it will use the chocolate local admin user. Okay. Um, when installing the CCM service, the default is to use a fully qualified domain name of the machine that is being installed on. Uh, as a result, there is an expectation that the certificate, either the self-signed certificate or the existence certificate, uh, is configured with the certificate thumbprint. So what that's, uh, what that's talking about is in order when machines, client machine, chocolate client machines are reporting into CCM, uh, it establishes a, a trust connection between the client and the server, okay? So in order for that to work correctly, uh, the default is to use the fully qualified dom domain name of the machine that the CCM service is running on. So in my instance, my fully qualified domain name is just CCM service because I'm in a local work group, I'm not in a domain. So it's going to be, the name is going to be CCM service. Now what the uh, installation package for this service, uh, CCM service is going to do is it's going to, by default, it's going to create a self-signed SSL certificate in order to establish that trust, trust relationship between the client and the uh, service machine. Okay. Now you can, if you want to use your own certificate, you can absolutely do that. Okay, you can pass in the certificate thumbprint as a package parameter. And what will need to happen then is uh, you'll need to ensure that the configuration that you set up, and we'll come into that, we'll have to, you'll have to set up the configuration to use the same name, the same, when you, if you, when you have a certificate, it will be attributed to a specific uh, server name. It'll have a, uh, what's the terminology I'm looking for? It'll have a, uh, certificate DNS name. Okay. Now that's the one that has to match. So those two things have to be lined up or agents, uh, the chocolate agent will never be able to check into CCM. Okay. So what this script is doing 
is it is estab figuring out what the host name and the fully qualified domain name of the machine is, and it is setting uh, the central management service URL uh, in the chocolate configuration to be that name. Okay, so we can go ahead and copy this and we can just execute it. Um, now we can just execute that here because, um, is this stalled? I'm gonna let that finish off. I think that was down, that's downloading one of the uh, larger KVs in order to make sure that that's installed. So let's just leave that running to time. We'll, we'll finish talking about this. I can run this script on my setup because I am not using any sort of um, custom domain name for accessing CCM. I will just be accessing it using the uh, the host name and of the machine itself. Okay. If you are not doing that, then this is the configuration that you need to set. You need you would need to provide the information about the fully qualified accessible URL that the service can use. But in my in my instance, I can run this code and it will be happy with uh, what I've done. Okay. So uh, that still I should that 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 should be quite quick to install now. So now that that's downloaded, so each of these uh, KBs are essentially no ops because they'll already be installed. But let's let that finish out. And while that's doing that, let's start another uh, PowerShell instance, run this administrator. And I'm just gonna set that config on this machine. So what's in my clipboard uh, is no longer there. I'm gonna copy that again. And I'm gonna go back to this PowerShell and for some reason that's not pasting. Um, maybe it is, it's just taking a long time. What's the, what's the system doing? Don't think this machine likes me at the minute. What's it doing? Chocolate is working quite hard doing something at the minute. Um, but so we've updated the central management service URL in the config based on that script to be HTTPS CCM service. Uh, the default port number that uh, CCM service is going to use is 24020 and then chocolate management service. So that is my central management service URL. Okay, so that's an important piece of information. And based on the default configuration, it's gonna create me, when I install the package, it's gonna create me a self-signed SSL certificate using CCM service as the host name. Okay, so that's an important piece of information there. Um, so hopefully this is gonna finish out soon. And when it does, what we'll be able to do is we will be able to install the service. Now, much like the database package, there are various uh, package parameters that you can pass in. So I've mentioned already, if you want to use a different username and password, you can pass those in. If you don't want the service to restart, that's mainly for uh, when you're upgrading, uh, you can specify don't restart the service as you're doing the uh, upgrade. If you want to use a different port number uh, rather than the default, you can pass that in. Uh, the certificate DNS name and the certificate thumbprint, those are the two things that you would use uh, if you're using a uh, already existing certificate. In my scenario, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, the connection string, this one's gonna be important because we, in the previous video, we looked at setting up our database and giving access to it, the a Choco user that we created within SQL Server. So I'm gonna need to make the connection string that I use match that Choco user that we set up previously. And if we were using a differently named SQL Server instance or a differently named database, you can pass those in as well, okay? So uh, there's some information here around uh, the chocolatey managed password. That's the password that will be created for the chocolatey local admin user that's created by default. So there's some information there uh, that I encourage you to look at again. So the scenarios here are driven by where we're installing to, or the scenario, whether we're using Active Directory, whether we're using a local Windows account, whether we're using SQL authentication, etc. So there's different scenarios in here. And the one that I'm gonna use is, um, let's find the one I'm gonna use, SQL Server Management User, here we go. So this is the one that I'm gonna use because this is using SQL Server authentication. So I'm gonna click on copy here 
And hopefully this is finished out, it has. So let's clear this out and let's put what I have in my clipboard into Notepad because I have to make a slight edit to it before we run it. So in here we're doing, uh, it's maybe hard to see, but it's gonna be, it's gonna take me a while to zoom in because of the fun that is Notepad. Zoom in. Zoom in. So we've got Choco install, uh, chocolatey management service, dash Y for confirm, packed parameter sensitive is, it's not gonna go a local host. Uh, so that's a slight, did I copy the wrong one? To a remote, it's actually this one that we want, sorry. We're going to a remote machine. So let's copy that and paste that. So the password that I used was one that you should never ever use password one exclamation mark. It was called Choco user though. And then the database name, we didn't change that. So we'll leave that as the default, which is chocolate management. And the server is gonna be CCM DB. That's the name of the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I am gonna attempt the installation of this package using those parameters. So the installation package will attempt to connect to that SQL server using that connection string before it actually does the install. So if it doesn't work for some reason, you should get uh, quite early feedback that uh, something isn't quite right. So let's see how we go on. Because <clears throat> in the previous video, we looked at opening up the necessary uh, firewall ports to uh, allow connection to that machine and to uh, set up uh, remote connections. So that side of things should be okay. And what we should hopefully see here is a successful communication attempt and then successful installation of the package. So let's see what happens. Connections uh, successfully established. Great. And as, as I mentioned in the previous video, the app settings.json file is where we are persisting uh, some that persisting that connection string information. Then it's going to go into creating the self-signed certificate and adding that into uh, the local store. And that's the certificate that's going to be used to establish a trust relationship between the clients that are checking into CCM. So with all of those things done, it's then going to install and start the uh, Windows service that is the um, CCM service. It's going to output some information about uh, the fully qualified domain name of this instance, the port number it's running on, and the. Uh, uh, oh, interesting. I don't. I think that expected to output the thumbprint of the SSL certificate, but for some reason it's not there. I might have to mention that to the support team, but. Um, that's that. So as a, to verify everything is set up, uh, open the services snap in. So let's go ahead and open services.msc. And we should see a new Windows service with the name of uh, chocolate management service, which we do, and it's running. Um, the installation folder is at, uh, in the chocolate lib folder. So let's go have a look there. So we've got C program data, Chocolatey, lib, central management service, tools, service, and this is where the service lives. Uh, open the service log, which is located uh, uh, slightly up from there. So to chocolatey and in logs. And here is the chocolatey service log, the CCM service log. So there's no obvious uh, errors there. So that looks good. So it's running and it's doing what it needs to do. And that is that. So the important takeaways there is that um, there's some, there's lots of uh, parameters that you can pass into this package. So depending on your exact scenario, you may need to uh, alter the installation parameters. The only one that I needed to pass in was the connection string using uh, a remote SQL server. Uh, and using the uh, Choco user that I added when I did the installation of the uh, database package. So with that done, we are two thirds through the uh, create installation of the CCM components. So we've got one more to do, 
And then once we have that, we should be able to start having uh, client machines reporting into CCM with uh, what they currently have installed. So if you have any questions about this video, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the uh, section below uh, or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and I can answer any questions that you have there. Um, but for now, that's it. So join me in the next video when we install the uh, CCM website. Thank you very much.